Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're gonna go through the Room EQ Wizard and using a mini DSP 2x4 HD, we're gonna work on my two subwoofers, which are currently the SVS PB1000 Pros. And they are in a cavity right behind this acoustically transparent screen that I built during the, the build process of my home theater. We're gonna go through the Room EQ Wizard and what that's gonna allow us to do is get everything time aligned so that our base is hitting across all six of my seats at the same time and we don't have peaks and nulls and hopefully we'll just have some nice even base throughout the entire space. So no matter where you're sitting, you're gonna get a good response. So the Room EQ Wizard is a free program. We're gonna get that all set up and go through some of the equipment that you need to do that and how it all works. I'm not an expert in this. In fact, this is the first time that I've ever actually done this myself. I'm very excited to see what our results are looking like and how we can get them better. Let's start by going through some of the initial setup products and equipment that you'll need to go through this type of a process. I have the Denon AVR X4700H. That is my main receiver and processor for my whole home theater system. Denon has the Odyssey room correction software built into it. So we will go through that as well when we are done. The microphone that comes with the Denon receiver and it is for running your Odyssey room correction. Now it's got a pretty long cord attached to it as you can see, but I've already stretched it out and I can get to my main listening position, but I don't have enough cord to get it to some of the other spots that we need to take measurements from as well. And this plugs into the front of the AVR with a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I got on Amazon and I've got an extension cable right here that will allow me to go an extra 10 feet. These two are just standard USB extension cables. The one on the left I believe is roughly 30 feet and that's gonna allow me to connect my uh, U-Mic 1, which is right here, out to my main listening position from my main PC, which is also my home theater PC, which is rack mounted. I actually do not own a laptop. I have a Chromebook, but it is not compatible with the RumiQ Wizard software. And then this shorter one here is just so that I can connect computer over to the mini DSP just standard HDMI cables. These are two that I had sitting around from previous stuff that I've used them for. They're not fancy. This really long one on the right here. I don't even know what model it is. It's probably HDMI one point something. Uh, the one on the left is going to go from computer over to the Denon so that I can output all of the sounds from the tone generator in Rumi Q Wizard to the receiver so it can push it out through the speakers so that we can take our measurements with the microphone. Various lengths, again, if you have a laptop and you can actually sit out in your room, uh, you're gonna need a long HDMI cable to get your laptop hooked up to your receiver. This is my computer desk. Right up here is my home theater PC. This is gonna be the one that will connect over to the Denon and be running the Rumi Q Wizard software. Right now, uh, we're seeing the screen. This is going through the Denon, and then from the Denon output back to the monitor here. Got a, a long HDMI cord coming back to the monitor. We've got our short blue one here going into the Denon. And then our two USB extensions here. This one here goes to the mini DSP so we can log into that and make our changes there. The long one comes out here and we've got our U-Mic one all set up at our main listening position. So since I'm out here, um, part of the setup, you have to get this serial number off of your U-Mic one and you will need that in order to download the correct calibration file. Okay. So we're at the desktop. We're gonna go get the software and get it installed. As you can see, I've already done this process. I'll show you real quick how it works. Open up a browser, do a Google search for mini DSP, find their website. You do have to create an account. In my case, I 
created an account and ordered my mini DSP 2x4 HD directly from them. So all I had to do was log in. And then after you log in, when you're, when you're signed in, you'll see your, your name up here in the upper right. There's a drop down box that says user downloads. You click on that, take you to this page, find whichever device that you have. Here's the mini DSP 2x4 HD right at the top. So we're going to click on this. It's going to take us here. We have different categories here. Again, finding the 2x4 HD. Here's a release log of all the different changes and upgrades. And here's your download file. So you click this, you download it, you install it. If you guys are doing this, I trust you know how to do that, so I'm not going to go through that step. That's going to install the software for your mini DSP. After that's done, you're going to need to go to your UMic 1. And I found that under products. UMic 1 takes you to the product page and I told you we were going to need that calibration file. This is where you enter that calibration. As you can see mine is 709-3397. You submit it and it already downloaded the two different calibration files that we'll get to here in just a second when we get into the Room EQ Wizard setup. To get REW or Room EQ Wizard, again a quick Google search for Room EQ Wizard. Here's their website. Click on the main page and I mean if you click downloads it's just going to take you right below here. Figure out what version of Windows or Mac or Apple, whatever you're running, you're going to download the correct file, find it in your downloaded folder, run it, install the application, and we'll be ready to rock. Now with both applications installed, I also made a folder here that will store some of our different files. Here's the UMic1 calibration files, for example. I'm going to start in the mini DSP. Double click it, it should open up the software. Once that's open, you need to connect to it before you do anything, and that's right up here, upper right corner, it says connect, click it, and then you see this little box over here that showed up. Don't close that program, it's okay to minimize it and get it out of the way, but that just means you're connected and actively making changes to the mini DSP. So this is the main page, and there's really just two different tabs here that we can go through real quick. So you have two inputs on the mini DSP and four outputs. Input two, we're not even using. I only have two subwoofers. They're on input one. So these two are on, outputs three and four are off. You have different configs up here too, config one, two, three, and four. And you can set up different house curves or different base levels. If you wanted to have one at nighttime, for example, if people are sleeping in the house and you want everything dialed way back. Hook up, change the config, run it that way, come back to your normal config one during the day. Really awesome, quick changes that you can do. You can buy an IR remote from the Mini DSP website that can change those configurations from a remote control without having to hook up to it and go through this process. Even if you do USB cable, pretty simple. Input two, we're gonna mute it, not using it. So we're concentrating on input one and our two outputs. The parametric EQ right now is flat. We have not EQ'd anything. This is the basic. If you go to advanced, um, we'll get to that here later on down the road when we get our, our house curve set up and our EQ. This is where you can uh, adjust the gain across the board. So if you had all four outputs going, you're going to adjust the total gain across the board here. If you go to the outputs tab up at the top, now you've got your four outputs. Now you can do individual parametric EQs on the individual outputs. Crossover, this is how it comes from the factory. You want this line to be flat all the way across. This low pass filter needs to be bypassed. Now you have a flat response all the way across, otherwise you may not get any type of output from your subwoofers on certain outputs from the mini DSP. Check all those real quick, that's under crossover. So we got a flat one on output one. Crossover output two, now this one's reversed, so we need to bypass the high pass filter to get our flat line across the top. We'll check output three, 
there we go and output four I'm gonna mute and mute output three and four not using them if you click up at the top where it says output one really cool thing here you can label your subs I have two I have a left and a right so that helps me keep track of them and I know which one I plugged into output one and output two our mini DSP is configured at this point now we're gonna open up REW and it usually checks for updates I'm messing around with this in the past I've had it pop up and say there's a newer version available go ahead and download it okay I got a pop-up that says mini DSP U mic one detected use it for measurement yes okay we've got REW open first thing we're gonna do is go through some settings you can do that by the toolbar here at the top that says preferences or you can go over here to the far right the little wrench icon that says preferences as well either one takes you to the same spot so under drivers Java is just fine for measuring our base levels our output device is going to be your receiver mine's the Denon and my input device is my U mic one click the tab at the top that says calibration files I did this set this up already so these are already in here but find anything that says U mic one and you're gonna browse and you're gonna find that 90 degree calibration file for your specific U mic that you downloaded from the mini DSP website and make sure that the 90 degree file is loaded into your U mic one calibration files and that's the file that is used when your U mic one is pointed straight up at the ceiling and that is used for measuring out in the open and that should be all you need to do under calibration files go back to sound card we're gonna go through the check levels which is down here kind of right in the middle lower of the screen but before I do that my two subwoofers that we're calibrating today are the SVS PB1000 Pros I'm gonna open up the app here they have app control which is really handy when they're behind a screen and you can't access the back of it super easy so what I'm gonna do is set the volume or gain to 50% and you can see the slider here on my phone goes from negative 60 to 0 so I'm gonna set the right sub here at negative 30 which is right in the middle so if something happens and my levels or settings get mixed up I know that when we went through and calibrated these it was right in the middle and you can do the same on your subwoofers if they have plate amplifiers find the gain or the volume mob and point it straight up right at 50 percent again if it gets bumped or anything happens to it you know exactly where it was when you calibrated it and the other thing I'm gonna check in here too is my polarity and it's positive which is the default and I'm gonna also check my phase which is zero which is the default I didn't do that on the left sub so I'm gonna go right back to it real quick okay so once all that is set up what we're gonna do next is follow these check levels when I click on it first there's some help stuff down here if you scroll through this paragraph here basically the part you want to pay attention to is the input level with a USB mic will usually be much lower and this is input so there's three graphs here in the upper right two of them are moving right now it's in and reference in the out is not moving quite yet and I have no sound from my subwoofers at this point but we're looking for the input which is this middle graph to read between negative 30 and negative 50 that's our goal and if we need to change that amount the sweep level right here that I just highlighted we can go up or down with this and get to between negative 30 and negative 50 so when I click next in the lower right that is going to start this process so I have audible sound coming from my subwoofers at this time and we are almost perfect right in the middle of negative 30 to negative 50 so we'll just stay right there at negative 12 I believe that's what it was on okay there are a few other changes that we need to make inside of the Denon AVR before we can actually take any measurements so what we're gonna do is using the remote we're gonna pop up the on-screen display again this may look different uh, depending upon your receiver or the type of setup but you will have some form of these settings in no particular order 
I'm going to start at the top here at audio. I know that we're going to want our subwoofer at zero. I had run Odyssey previously, so I'm sure that was something that it had adjusted when I was just kind of learning and playing around with it. Odyssey, or room correction, whatever yours may be, you're going to want to make sure everything is off when we take these measurements for the sub. We're going to go down to inputs, nothing there, speakers, we're going to go to manual setup, speaker config, we want to make sure everything is small, so we're good there. And even though we have two subwoofers, we're just using the one output on the receiver itself, that's okay. That it says one speaker. We're gonna to go to distances. So here we have our subwoofer at 24 feet. This is something that we need to make a change, so we're gonna make it to zero. We're gonna go down to levels. This is your test tone. And all this is doing is just verifying that our level for our subwoofer is at zero. And it is, since we changed it in the other menu. So crossovers, this is another thing that we have to do. Um, what we want to do is change our crossover as high as you can go. And 250 appears to be as high as I can go on my Denon. So what we're trying to do here is make sure that no, or as little as noise as possible, comes out of our mains so that it doesn't interfere with our recording. We want everything below that to go to the subwoofers. We're only going to be EQing up to somewhere between 100 and 140 uh, hertz anyways. We're going to drop down to base, make sure that this is just LFE. My only other option is LFE plus main. We do not want that one. So LFE at 120 hertz for our crossover for our low frequency effects. That is our speakers. That should be all we need to do. Only last thing I want to check is there is a button on the Denon remote. In the lower left, it's a green button under sound mode and it says movie. If I click on that, this menu shows up and it is on Dolby Audio. We want it to be on stereo. So click it again here, go up to stereo, select that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now before we take an actual measurement of our subs, first of all, we got the mini DSP software open, double checking in the upper right here, we got a green check mark that we are connected. Both subwoofers are not muted, so they are ready to both play. Coming over to REW, what we're gonna do is set our volume on our receiver itself, and we're gonna get to 75 decibels. How we're gonna do that is there is a, a built-in SPL meter. It's right here in the middle at the top, so if I click on it, it's gonna open up a decibel meter. The couple settings here that you wanna make sure, kinda right across the bottom here, there's SPL, you want to make sure that is selected, and then your middle is A weighting, C, and Z. You want to make sure this is set to C in the middle, and that's decibels, so C, and then uh, F or S is fast or slow. Slow gives you a different reading, so it's a little easier to dial in where your actual level is at. And then we can come back to REW and click on the generator. And this is gonna generate noise. Clicked on this, it's already on noise here at the top. So we'll leave it at noise. And there's several different kinds of noise that you can make. And what we want is pink random, all the way over here, far left. So noise, pink random, and you have different selections here. We're gonna select our speaker calibration. This is gonna be above that 250 hertz crossover that we set up in the receiver. So this will go to our mains. Down here at the bottom, it's set to left. When I hit play in the lower right, this green arrow, it will send this pink random noise to the main. And what we're looking for is 75 decibels on the SPL meter. And to get there, simply turn the volume up or down on the receiver until you get to 75 decibels. So we'll go ahead and play the noise now. I've got noise coming out and we're at roughly 66 decibels. So I'm gonna start turning the volume up. So right there looks pretty good. That put me at negative 18 on my receiver. Next is change it to sub calibration. We're going to measure each individual subwoofer in your system and try to get it to roughly the same decibel level as your mains. We've already set the volume on our receiver for the mains to get to 75 decibels, so now we do not want to touch the volume on our receiver at all. So what we're going to do is we've got our SPL meter open. Uh, we're on SPL C weighting and slow reading. We'll open up our generator again 
and we want to do one sub at a time. So this is where we're going to switch over to the mini DSP and we will start with the left sub. So I will mute the right sub. So now we should have output from only the left sub. We've got our generator, we got noise, pink random, and we're going to be on sub cal. And so when we hit play, we will have sub calibration on the left sub. We're going to see where our volume's at. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. I can hear the subwoofer, but we are obviously way lower than our mains. So what you can try and do is in the mini DSP is your gain and it will go up to 12. So if I add five, we're up to 68, 69 decibels. Let's go to 10, 74, as high as we can go is 12. Okay, that gets us to 75. I don't like being that high on the mini DSP. That pretty much limits us from making any further changes higher than that. So I'm gonna zero that back out. What I'm gonna do is open up my SVS app and go to my left sub and I had it set at 50%, which was negative 30. I'm gonna raise that level up to try and dial it in a little closer. So right there, we're at negative 15. We're a little too hot. So let's go negative 20. That gets us pretty close. Negative boost, two decibels. And you can run the subs a little hot, that's not gonna hurt. If it's pushing 76, 77, it's easier to cut when we get to the EQ stage. In the mini DSP, we've boosted it three decibels and we're hovering right there, 76, 77. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna leave this tone generator playing, I'm gonna mute the left sub and unmute the right sub. And as we can guess, we're too low at the negative 30 volume in the app, so we're gonna bump that up to the negative 20, and there we go. We're hovering right at 76, 77 decibels. So now we are all set up, ready to do some further measuring. Before we take some measurements, I wanted to touch on a process called gain matching. What this process does is make sure that all of your subwoofers are producing the same amount of output and that no one single sub driver is working harder than another in your room. My understanding is that this process is more for subwoofers that are mixed, like different brands or types or sealed or ported. And in my case, when the subwoofers are completely identical in all ways, as long as the gain or volume controls are set the same, they theoretically should already be gain matched because of how they are identical. If the subs are not the same and you are going to go through the gain match process, the best practice is to pick a spot in your room and mark it with some tape. Move sub number one on that mark and your measurement mic at your main listening position. Turn off all other subwoofers in your system so only that sub is playing. Set the gain where you want it and play a tone or pink noise through that subwoofer and mark it on the volume recorded on the SPL meter in REW or on a phone app or whatever you are using to measure. Do not change the volume on the receiver at any point in time while you are going through this process. Then disconnect sub number one and move it out of the way and put number two in the exact same spot sub number one was measured from. Play the same tone or pink noise and adjust the gain or volume on the sub itself so it matches sub number one's level at the main listening position. Remember, do not adjust the receiver's volume at all. Continue with the remaining subs. What this process does is it takes all of the room modes out of the equation and you are just measuring the subs output so that they match. If you can't move your subs for whatever reason, you can put the measurement mic a few inches away from the center cone of the driver and take a measurement this way. If the sub is ported, it might not be as accurate this way, but it's better than nothing. Make sure you measure the mic distance from the driver and place it in the exact same spot or distance when you move it to the next driver. After the gain matching process is completed, you are ready to move on and start taking your measurements. And just so there is no confusion, the process I personally went through is called level matching where I matched the volume levels of my two identical subwoofers at my main listening position with the subwoofers being in different locations, unlike gain matching. Okay, here we go. Now for the fun stuff. Let's take some measurements and see what we're looking like. What I want to do to start is just take a couple different measurements of each individual sub. I have the three love seats across the back of my room, if you remember right. So I'm gonna start at my main listening position and I'm gonna do both the left and right sub and then together. 
and then I'm going to move it to one of the other positions, left and right sub together, move it to the other love seat, left and right together, just to get some baselines uh, that can show where we started this whole process before we make any further changes from here. To take measurements, you simply click on the measure button all the way on the upper left. You're going to get this window. A couple things to check here. Once you set these up, they should stay. So your start frequency, you know, 10 hertz is plenty. Frequency, change that to 120, for example, because we're not really EQing any higher than that. We've got that low pass filter on anyway. 10 to 120, we don't need to make any changes uh, with our level. Up here on setting, we're, we're sweeping. This drop down box is basically over here on the right is 5.5 seconds. So if you change that up, the sweep will then take 10.9 seconds. We don't need to change that. Leave it at 256K, your 5.5 second. But really, you don't have to make any other changes. Make sure your output is master volume and your input is the microphone master volume. Before you hit start at the, the bottom, if you want to, you can check your levels once again. And it says level OK. Now we can name this up here or you can name it afterwards if you want. It doesn't matter. Main listening position, left sub four. So before we do anything at all, just the left sub, right sub's muted. Let's do a measurement. So I just heard it run through its sweep. And here we go, our first measurement. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Had to get this uh, dark background off of here. Um, so to do that, we ended up going to the preferences and uh, where we were messing around with this stuff earlier. If you go to view, use dark background. Uncheck that and you will have the white background. To me, it makes it a little easier to see on my setup. It may vary with yours or maybe you want to go to the dark background. That's how you do it. So anyway, we just measured the right sub. If you highlight it down here on the bottom, hold your, your cursor over the two, it'll highlight them so they're easier to see. So we do have the, the same type of a peak at around 60 hertz. It's just not quite as bad. I'm going to pop back over to the mini DSP, unmute the left sub. So now they're going to both play. We're going to go back to measure. This is going to be both subs before. Okay, so that is this blue line. So with them together, our SPL, our output is better than individual ones. We still have a, a null down there around 60 hertz, so we'll deal with that after a little bit. Those are our before in the main listening position. I'm going to move it over to the right love seat and we're going to do the same thing. Okay, the U mic one has been moved over to the right love seat. Click on measure. I'm going to pop over to the mini DSP, mute the right sub. We'll just do an individual one here. Now we're going to call this the right listening position, left sub before. Okay, so now we have our right listening position. I'm going to move it over to the left love seat. Again, do those same three measurements over there as well. Okay, so before we start on the left listening position, I'll just turn these off. Back to measure, left listening position, left sub. Any DSP, mute the right sub, measure the left. Flip that around, measure the right sub. Make sure they're both unmuted. All right, that one actually looks pretty decent compared to some of the other ones. So what I'm gonna do is just turn off everything. Starting at the main listening position, this is both subs. The right listening position, both subs. And then the left listening position, both subs. And I'm taking these measurements right in the middle at ear level of the headrest of the, the love seats, right smack dab in the middle of each love seat. Quite a bit of a difference between the different uh, seating positions there. Now we are going to start making some adjustments. We'll go back to our main listening position with the U-Mic 1, see if we can tweak it and get it a little better. Okay, our next step, currently have the, the three different seating positions on the graph. You can see how they're different with both subs playing together at the same time. So now what we're going to do, we're back at the main listening position on the U mic. So I'm going to turn off the left and the right. And what I'm going to do here is go file. I'm going to save all measurements. And I'm going to just call it before. Save it. Overwrite it. Yes. Pair it to that one just to make sure that everything is still the same after moving the microphone around a little bit and it didn't change anything. Okay, so here's our graph. They're pretty much identical. So our mic must be in the pretty same spot that it was. So uh, I don't need to save this because I already did. 
So what we're going to do here is start time aligning the subs and see if we can improve on this measurement. So I closed it and came back out. So I got to go back to the all SPL tab. We're at 130, 110. We're good there. Five decibels on the left. Okay. So here's both subs main listening position. To do your time delay, typically want to take the sub that's closest to you and add the delay to that one first. My subs are both pretty identical in distance since they're both behind the screen to my lane main listening position, but the right sub would technically be just a little bit closer. So I'm going to come down here to this one and this is a delay and we're going to add a delay and click the buttons. You can really fine tune it. Um, I have no idea where we're starting, so let's just do two millisecond delay. That's all we have to do. We're still connected to the mini DSP. We go back up here to measure. We're going to do main listening position, right sub two. Not a whole lot of difference. This is our new one, so it's improved on that null just a little bit. So this is where it's going to take some time. You're just going to make some changes, take a measure, make some more changes, and take a measurement. You can really dial this in until you really start seeing some improvement. I didn't change the name before I took that measurement. Go right here and change it to four. So that is our two, and there's our, I'm going to get rid of the before. So there's the four, it's a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is uh, stop the camera, play around with this a little bit, and I'll be back with some better results. Uh, so here's some of the results. So right now this graph is them before anything at all. And you can see that before anything at all, this was the right sub by itself and the left sub by itself. With both of them on, we have positive summation over each individual sub before any type of correction or delay was added. I started with the right sub and uh, I added two. This null, you can see that it definitely jumped up right here. We're at 64.7 and it jumped up to 69.7. So a couple decibels there by adding a delay of two to the right sub. When you add a delay of four compared to two, it started dropping. That null started coming back. Six was even worse. You know, eight, we're, we're losing output all the way through. Clearly, not the right direction. So those were all wrong. I tried a delay of one, one, you know, two still above one, just a little bit. So, so far two is the winner. And then I went to the left sub just to see if adding delay to that. And I set the delay on the right back to zero. Not good with the left sub was all over the place. That definitely wasn't the right way. So then I set them both back to zero delay and I inverted the right sub. Not good. Set that one back to zero, inverted the left sub. Same thing didn't make a difference. So inversion is not the way to go either. Kind of started fine tuning that delay of two on the right sub down here. And I did a two and a half. It was a little bit better than the two. A three, which was about the same as the two and a half, maybe just a a little bit better. Um, but then the 2.75 is kind of the one that I liked the most. It's pretty much the same as three. We're kind of splitting hairs at this point. I'm going to go with the three. I'm going to get rid of the two. This was before our time alignment. We've made some improvements. Nothing huge, uh, but both subs are, you know, fairly close to each other. There's not going to be a whole lot of difference when they're physically close to each other in that cavity behind the screen. So if we go with three, and then just for comparison again, here's the left sub by itself, and the right sub by itself. I'm gonna get rid of the before. What's on top here is our time align subs one and two. So we have pretty much positive outcome, positive summation compared to the two individual sub graphs by themselves. So we've achieved that. We've really lessened this one nasty null down here, come up quite a bit before even any EQ has begun. I'm gonna go with this. Now, if I had more than two subwoofers, what we would do now is treat subs one and two as one sub. They are time aligned together. Now we would go to sub three and we would take, you know, basically subs one and two, which we're considering one sub and pair it to sub number three and start time aligning those together and doing the delay on sub number three until we can get that graph above. Once again, we're adding more output to the mix. We want to get more positive summation. We want to keep increasing our levels. And then once you would have that done, then subs one, two, and three are considered one sub in the room and you would go to your, your fourth if you had a fourth. And just repeat that entire process, each time adding one more sub to the mix 
until you can improve, get everything delayed, and uh, get a nice graph. Now we're going to move on to our EQ stage and see if we can get this looking nicer. Okay, so the next step is applying our EQ. I'm going to do a clean measurement here. We're going to call this main listening position to line. So over here on the mini DSP, you can see we had three for our gain and we had three for a delay on the right side. And that's how we came up with time aligned curve, which you're seeing over on the REW screen. So that's where we are right now. So to apply our EQ at the top here in REW, we just hit the EQ button. So we click on that and this is what comes up and this is what you're going to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to start over here in these settings. So we're going to pull this first box down. I think I pre-populated this in settings that I had the mini DSP 2x4 HD, so that is correct. Down to the next box, which says target settings, we are doing a subwoofer. Our base management cutoff, we don't want it to cut anything off because we're going to let the receiver handle all that. Just set it to a really high number way above where we're going to be working. Not going to worry about our slope for now. And then the low frequency cutoff, again, we don't want REW doing anything there. So that'll be a really low number, like zero. The add a room curve is unticked. We want to select it. Okay, so for our room curve, different settings here. I'm going to take these from the home theater gurus advice. He's got a really good video on doing all this and that's what I watched multiple times before I'm attempting. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. For his room curve is this low frequency rise start. The default's 200 here. Change it to 100 and then the rise end instead of 20. We're going to move it to 30. We're going to leave the, the slope here at 1.0. So now we are going to move to our filter tasks. So what we're trying to do is match the range of our subwoofers. The PB1000 Pros are tuned to about 18 Hertz. So we're going to leave that 105 work. So we're just going to leave that individual max boost, no more than five. The overall is going to be 10. It won't boost anything more than 10. And then the flatness is how well it's going to try and stay on this curve here when it tries to EQ this out. To set this up, what I need to do is change my LF rise slope. It's currently 1.0 right here. So when I start putting it up, you see the slope chain on the left. So right about here, 75 decibels. When it comes down, we're at about 100 hertz and we get to 75 decibels. So what we're doing at lower volumes, we're boosting all of these octaves, all these frequency range. And we want about a 10 hertz boost. So here we're 82.6. This right here is pretty much right at 75. So we're going to keep going up with our slope. There is 85 right on the dot. So there is our slope. We've got everything in. If we just want to see what it's going to look like at, at uh, 75 decibels, because what you can do is move the decibel range up or down, and that moves the whole frequency range up or down. Well, let's just leave it at 75. So what we're going to do is click on the bottom down here, match response target. And if this comes up, just hit OK. OK, so what you got to do here is just kind of keep messing with it a little bit till you find a curve that you like. This was the uh, 75 decibel target level. So what you got to do is just kind of play with this target level right here. We're at uh, 75 decibels, moving that up or down. You know, we can start high, 76 before we uh, start getting to have to boost this little null right here. A match your response to target so I can highlight the predicted there it is still got that null but it boosts it up pretty high so it's at 76 if we drop it to 75 it's kind of doing the same thing that that null is still there we can try 74 and pretty much it looks like the curve is staying the same I don't really see a whole lot of difference so it's really just kind of cutting it down, which is good that it's not having to, to boost anything up. And we're not getting rid of that peak. So I'm going to go back to 75, match that one. Okay, so there's our prediction. It's still going to have the null right around 58 to 60 hertz there. Everything else is pretty much the same. 75 decibels there, and we're up to the 85 right there. So then after we've matched it to our target, we're going to come down here and at the bottom, we're going to save filter coefficients to file. So when you click on that, this is where you're going to want to find your little directory that we made right here. And I'm going to call this uh, 75 dB house curve. We're going to save that. So then where the mini DSP really comes into play, so we're going to go over to it. And in our parametric EQ, this is left sub. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go, it's right now it's in the basic. I'm going to click on advanced and that's going to bring this up and it brings these couple menus over here. So if you don't see the menus, 
import and clear click on the advanced tab they show up come over here to import when you click on that we're going to find our folder here's our 75 db house curve eq we're going to open it and the magic is done that house curve is already inside of the mini dsp we can go up here to select channel and we have our right sub and i'm going to link it and yes i want to link it it's going to mirror channel one done so now when i x out of here and go under my right sub parametric eq and click on it there it is you can't link more than two channels. So if you had outputs three and outputs four, you could match those together and do the same thing. Now that our parametric EQ is in there for both my left and right sub in the mini DSP, they're not muted. We're gonna go over to measure house curve EQ. Okay, so we have our time aligned curve right here highlighted, and it's just a little bit above our house curve EQ'd line. We have that in the, the mini DSP. Now, if we want, we can go in and start tweaking on this null and this one up here at uh, 21 hertz if we want, see if we can improve on that EQ even more. Okay, so to do our individual EQs, uh, this can be quite the process too. It depends upon how OCD you are and how much time you wanna spend trying to improve on things. Here's our house curve EQ. I've clicked right here and we are at the bottom of this null at 58 and a half um, hertz in the mini DSP. We can go to our uh, inputs and routing tab and this also has a parametric EQ. So what this is going to do is apply the EQ to all outputs. We're on EQ1, go to advanced. We said that we were low at about 58 and a half hertz. On our basic tab, frequency was 58, can't do a half, so 58 hertz. And we wanted to gain quite a bit. Let's just start at 10 decibels. Now our Q factor is how wide the wave is gonna be. The higher the number, the sharper the wave. In fact, let's just leave it at zero. We'll go one. Okay, so EQ2, nothing in there. EQ1 is what we just did. So if we close out of that, that will be applied to all four outputs on input one on top of the house curve that we put in over here. So now we just go back to our REW, and do a measurement. So 58 hertz, okay. So it kind of brought the whole line up, it looks. It didn't quite flatten anything out, but it brought the whole line up. So I don't care for that. So we'll go back to our EQ1. Let's drop the gain to five and let's sharpen up this Q factor a little bit, see if it will not affect the entire line so much. That's better. Still saying uh, pretty flat, but our, our uh, null has increased so i'm gonna mess with this a little bit and see what happens i'll be right back so what i ended up doing here three different frequencies that i adjusted and then nothing else across eq1 at 58 hertz i boosted at 10 with a q factor of eight that's this big one right here and that was that really bad null that we had and then uh down at the lower end 21 trying to boost this purple line right here up gained at five and then that brought Another little uh, peak, I guess it was right up here, about 21 or 22, and that's EQ3, one, freak, one hertz later, and I dropped that with a Q factor 20, pretty sharp. So when I got those three in there after messing with it multiple times, final curve right here. So that is uh, where we end up when we're all said and done. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to go in there and spend a whole lot of time on every little thing at that point. I, I don't think you would even notice any different, but that looks really nice to me. Again, I'm not an expert. I really like the looks of that response. The other thing that we want to do is go into our outputs tab in the mini DSP. We're going to put a crossover on it. So this is where we want it to roll off so that it doesn't even try and play those super low frequencies that it's not even capable of playing. We're working with our, our high pass filter. And let's just say our cutoff frequency is 20 hertz. So there, it moved it down. And these different drop-down boxes is how fast it drops off. Whether it rolls off very gradually, or you get down here into the, see, that's a pretty steep roll off. And that's kind of what we want to see down here on that, that lower end. A couple different ones that are pretty steep. You can put your mouse over right here. So we selected 20, because it's dropping off at 20. We lost output above 20. We're at 25, we're already starting to lose. So we need to drop this down. That's 18, there's 17, so it's 17. And we're starting to roll off at about 19. I'm gonna even go to 16. You can follow the line there. So 18, negative one, 19, we're zero. 
So there we go. That's our high pass filter. We want to link this just like we did to our other sub. Same thing applies here. You can only link the first two subs or any two outputs together. So if I go to right sub, go to crossover, there it is. Same thing, high pass filter, done. So we have our parametric EQ on both of them. High pass filter, let's take a measurement of those. All right, not a whole lot of change. We already had kind of a, a good roll off happening already. Good with that, works for me. That's where we began. That's where we ended up. That was our time alignment, EQ, and final. The other thing you want to double check here in your final curve after you've done everything, we just took this measurement, which was our final curve with the high pass filter applied, our house curve. So at the top of the, the curve here, we're at 87, almost 88 decibels. And then as we go down to our lowest point here, we're at 79. Well, I guess less than 10 decibels, but it's there. If we needed to change anything or you know boost it overall, that's a very simple thing over here in the Mini DSP. Again, you can either do it by individual sub or you can just go to your inputs and routing. And if you put in your gain right here, overall, it's gonna boost the entire curve, every single output, just like we did with the parametric EQ on the inputs tab. So that's one way you can boost or, uh, or subtract from your gain across the entire four outputs. Okay, so here's a final comparison of where we're at with everything. So the main listening position before we did anything at all, this was both subs, and this is our final curve with all of our EQ, our house curve, the manual EQ applied. So there's a, got rid of our null and everything's pretty nice and flat. That's at the main listening position. Right listening position before, both subs, after. And then the left listening position before and after. I'm pretty happy with the, the main listening position. Okay, to wrap this video up, um, we'll look at a couple more things here real quick and do some final thoughts and notes on this whole process. So again, main listening position, this is both subwoofers, our final curve when we're all said and done. Um, at our peak here, we're at about 88 um, decibels, and when we go down to here, we're at 76 almost, so we've got you know a good 10, 11, 12 decibel drop there, so we're good there. Right sub, left sub at the main, so you know our house curve is above the individual subs. If we go to our right listening position, this is both subs. This is the right and the left. So again, our orange line now is, for the most part, above both outputs. And our final listening position, the left, one sub, one sub. The purple line now is pretty much above everything. So if we look at the before and when you open up new ones and you just have a whole bunch of stuff some of the shortcuts you can do here in rew when you right click down here you can clear traces see i've got two different files loaded in here i just loaded the before if i clear just the before it'll get rid of everything because that's all i had selected or you can select all of them clear the all positions some shortcuts here instead of individually having to click on them all one at a time. So what I just added in was the before main listening position, both subs before, both final. So green line is main listening before we did anything at all. And the, the blue line highlighted here is our house curve and all said and done. Quite a bit of difference there. If we take a look at the Okay, so our right listening position, both subs before. Our right listening position, both final. So we went from the green, both subs, before we did anything at all, to the red with the house curve, 
and definitely a lot smoother of a response. No real bad peaks and just a little more even throughout. In our final position, we have the left listening position, both subs, then our left listening position, both on our final curve. When you are all said and done, and you have everything up to this point completed, the next step is to rerun your room correction. In my case, it's the Odyssey program. And after that is done, what I like to do as a kind of a double checking Odyssey's corrections that it makes is to go through and set up my U mic one at my main listening position again, and then going through the uh, test tones that are built in, go through each of your speakers and make sure that they're all outputting the same SPL at your main listening position. I did have to adjust several of mine up a little bit so I got them all back to 75 decibels throughout. Just another little tweak you can do when it's all said and done and your Odyssey or room correction is done with its thing and it's made its adjustments. I'm going to wrap it up at this point. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, I'm not an expert. This is actually the first time that I've gone through this whole process. It was a, a learning curve for me as well, but I'm pretty happy with the output. I'm excited to go check it out and see what it sounds like now before and after, and I can follow up with those results in another video down the road. Hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.